We are now being joined by our second guest of the night. He started off the main card of Bellator 274 and arguably provided the fight of the night. Moving on to 5-0, please welcome Davian All Day Franklin. How you doing, yes, man? Sir. Glad to have you on the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Uh, so a lot of things we want to talk about in this fight this Saturday. Uh, but first, I want to talk a little bit about the noise that you had going into the fight. Uh, your opponent seemed a bit bothered that you were ranked above him, even though he had more uh, pro MMA experience. Now that all is said and done, <laughs> you had your uh, you were the one that got your hand raised. Uh, did Saeed's criticism affect any uh, any mental aspect of your game plan going into the fight? Uh, no, not really, not really. Just uh, <clears throat> I'm like. No disrespect to size someone, but I knew I was better. You know, I knew that like, you know, he had a good, he had a good game plan. But I, I like I came into that fight sick. I had bronchitis, and I spent like the, the the weekend before in the emergency room. So, but I told myself like I kept telling myself this guy can't beat me on my worst day. I just kept telling myself that. And I can't remember Michael Jordan. Uh, Michael Jordan played with the flu, so I still went through with the fight, and uh, I just knew I'd be able to do it. And I knew that, like, you know, it doesn't you – know, he's focused on the rankings, and I'm, and I'm focused on beating him. So I knew that was a difference. For sure. Um, did anything about his performance – I know that I know that you feel that you're better than him, and I would have to agree with that. But did anything about his performance um, surprise you in any way or his game plan altogether? Yeah, he was, like uh, – he was more ev evasive than what I thought he would be. And um, he, he, he was also – he, he threw better combinations. I think he, he he improved a lot for the fight with me, I think. I think that he was like, as much as I wanted to make a statement, I think he went in there and wanted to make a statement as well. And that, that, I thought that was kind of cool because, he, he you know, he, he, he kind of evaded, evaded me a lot. But, you know, he, he didn't like – he exchanged more in the first round than he did with Minikoff and Tyro Fortune, I feel like. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I noticed that as soon as you walked into the cage, you had your back towards your opponent until the announcer called out your name. Uh, can you talk us through, I guess, what was going through your mind in that moment, if there was any uh, significance to that? I mean, I always do that. That's that's like my thing. That's like my trademark. Like, that's my thing. And if anybody else started doing it, they, they, they stole it from me. So <laughs> that's just my way of getting getting psyched in. Some people get themselves psyched out. I get myself psyched in the zone. Like, that's my way of getting, getting in the zone. Yeah, you look like you were charging up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so what is it like? So you, so you face your opponent, like you don't face your opponent the whole time. And then when you see his face, do you get like some type of energy or like, how does that work for you? you no, know, I, uh, it has nothing to do with my opponent. It has all to do with me. Too mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with me. Like trying to like psych him out. It, it's just, it's all like, that's, I don't want to give my secret away, but yeah, it's mm -hmm. just, it's, it's honestly me getting myself in the zone to be short with you guys to put it, you know, in short, I got you. Um, so the commentators on the broadcast, they were mentioning that you don't know how to throw a punch without the intent of uh, knocking your opponent out or like like taking their head off. Uh, do you agree with that statement? And uh, do, you, do you take that as a compliment or an insult? Uh, I can't really take it as an uh, insult, but. I don't, I don't, I don't agree, and I don't disagree. Like, it doesn't matter if, I, if I'm throwing every punch with intent because I, I was able to do that the full three rounds, mm -hmm. the whole fight. So like, and I did it without punching myself out. So I don't really take yeah. it as a compliment or an insult. I think that what they're referring to is uh, when you're throwing your punches, it's like. <laughs> It's like it's so crazy because you're such a big guy, and like just imagining if one of those hits land, it's uh, gonna be night night for uh, any of your opponents or not anyone in the world. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that uh, with with Saeed Soma, like like I said, man, like I really, I think I, my technique just went out the window because I really just like, man, I, I know I could knock him out. Like I know I just, I just needed to connect one time. I think I was just trying too hard to connect, but. You know, uh, you learn through trial and error, and I learned a whole lot from that fight. So this is only the second time in your young career that you made it to the third round. Uh, how do you think your conditioning held up? Like you said, you were throwing with power well into the third round. Uh, I think a lot of people were surprised to see that because most heavyweights can't have that same power and cardio so late in the fight. Yeah, just, you know, just hearing him, like, constantly talk about my cardio, like, like he's either underestimating my cardio or overestimating his own cardio because – 
I remember there was a time in that, like I knew I was getting tired, but like it, I, I wrestled my whole life. So I knew how to push through my tiredness. And uh, I think there, when I looked at his face, he was like huffing and puffing too. So it's like, you know, all that cardio talk he was talking about, that was, you know, that was, that was BS. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> truthfully, I put in the work and I knew I put in the work. So it gave me the confidence to, like I do punch a rope. It gave me the confidence to go into the fight and know that I could, I could like, you know, I could punch and, I could strike with him into the third round. I just wish that I would have been more composed instead of like seeing red. I, that was like my, that's why I was like so hard on myself after the fight. And I just wanted to get back in there ASAP, which I'm already lined up for a new fight. Uh, Can you May break 6th. the news? The name, anything? May, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, it's May 6th and it's in Paris. That's all I'll tell you. Okay. That's exciting. And, uh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Congrats, man. We're definitely going to be tuning in for that. Uh-huh. Thank you. Uh, so my next question, um, I don't necessarily agree with it, but uh, what people are saying, but uh, there's some chatter in the media. Uh, some people think that the fight could have gone the other way. Um, when, the, when the fight finished, were you confident? And did you think that you did enough to, uh, to win the fight? Um, I was confident, but I knew that. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. I don't really see any. <clears throat> I don't really see a whole lot of people talking about that. It could have went the other way. Most people think it's, it should have be, been a unanimous decision. It's uh what what I see is um a lot of people are mentioning the striking differential, so if yeah, if do you, but like do you think those do you, do you think that those the striking differential do you think those are accurate because I I got two takedowns. Now, if you watch you know the fight, I mean? I mean you you walked him down pretty much the whole fight. That's what so I'm saying. If you, if you watch the fight, like he's like he's kind of like the strikes that they that he did throw he he threw in a clinch and they were like strikes that didn't they had no significance to it, like he didn't tag me at all he didn't move me at all like. I don't know. I, I do think that the people who wanted to see him win, of course, they're going to have something to say. But do I give a shit? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what does that do for me? Worried about what they got to say about me. Come on now. I beat his ass. And that, and if we fight again, I know what I'm going to do different. It's going to be a whole different performance. But I do respect him. So with the exception of your first pro MMA fight, you fought almost exclusively at the Mohegan Sun Arena. Has that arena become like your house or are you hoping to fight outside of Connecticut as your career progresses? I'm hoping to fight outside of Connecticut as my career progresses, but it, it seems like the people in Connecticut are, are kind of getting to know me. I feel like I've kind of developed some kind of a fan base there. So I'm as long I don't I wouldn't mind fighting there whenever. I, I like it. I like fighting there. I know the place now. So, you know, truthfully, it doesn't matter where I fight. Every cage is my home. So uh I heard something about uh the WWE showing interest in signing you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that, if it's true? And uh, are you interested in that at all? Yeah, I grew up watching uh, WWE. Um, when I was about 19 years old, I I, um, I was a national qualifier for collegiate wrestling. And uh, long story short, after one of my wrestling matches, which is how I looked, Dre Briscoe approached me and he tried to sign me, but I was still in school and I wanted to give it some time. So uh, long story short, I ended up like playing. Well, yeah, I ended up, I ended up pursuing it kind of like basically they tried to sign me. And um, by the time it kind of started to happen, I just wasn't interested anymore. And I went, I went to Orlando, had the tryout. Didn't go so well. I wasn't prepared. And, uh, and that was kind of, that was like, that was that honestly. And oh, uh, uh -huh. yeah. So after, say, and after you finish your MMA career, was is that something you would still consider, or is that out of the question at this point? I don't know. Like, it's weird for me to think about me finishing my MMA career because I know like there's a lot that I could achieve in MMA. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. That's I can't even think about doing anything else but MMA right now. Like, I'm so. It's, MMA has been so so good to me, <laughs> you know. I got you. So you said the next fight that you want is Linton Vassal next summer after you've uh, had some time to fix the errors that you made. You've also uh, on this on the show just now mentioned a couple of times that you want to fix a couple of errors that you made. Uh, so any any of those you can allude to uh, as to what went wrong or what you could have done better this Saturday? Yeah, uh, I think, like I said, more more composed in my striking. I could have been more technical in my striking. Uh, but I think that just come with, like, just time and, and getting more skin in the game because, like, I get, I get 
in practice, I can, I can throw like super good, but in, in a real fight where the pressure's on, the lights on, everybody's looking at you, it's a whole different ball game. So just being more composed and I also want to throw more uppercuts. Also like there's, I shouldn't have let Saeed Soma hold me against the cage so much. You know, I'm, I'm bigger than him, I'm stronger than him. I could have moved him off of me, but I, I kind of just took those opportunities just to catch my breath. Cause I knew he was like expending, expending his own energy trying to hold me down. So I was like, okay, let me just, he's trying to catch his breath. Let me catch my breath. And, you know, and that's kind of what I was thinking, but uh, just, just little things like that. More technical in my striking. Don't leave myself exposed so much. Throw more uppercuts. Those kind of things. I got you. Uh, so yes, this sir. is yes. Yeah, so this is gonna be my uh, last question. We're gonna let you go after this. Um, yes, you don't have. This is not really related to your fight, and you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. But um, you being you training out of uh, Jackson Wink. Uh oh, um, uh -oh. I already know. <laughs> go ahead. Know what I'm gonna. Yeah, what did you think of the breakup between John Jones and <laughs> John Jones and Jackson Wink? And uh, what are what are your thoughts on that? And once again, if you you feel uncomfortable answering that, you don't have to. I know. I uh, in truth, man, like for the most part, every uh, every encounter I've, I've ever had with John Jones has been pleasant. It's unfortunate that we spend more time hanging out as boys than than training partners, but. Uh, I hope that, that I hope that's a situation that could be rectified between him and the coaches, and they can come together because John Jones is he's John Jones. He's the goat. I want to I want to see him uh, continue to, to thrive. I don't I don't I don't want to see like I don't know like he shouldn't be going through what he's going through at this point of, in his career. So uh, my opinion, I, I hope that one day he could probably come back. But you know, that's that's all. That's entirely up to him. Mm -hmm. So you and John Jones are good friends. You guys still hang out and uh, stuff like that. We don't hang. We don't hang out anymore. He he hit me up not too long ago, and he and he was like trying to like train me or something like that, like become a coach or something like that. But uh, okay. I probably shouldn't have said that. But <laughs> but <laughs> like, truthfully, uh, no, we don't we don't hang out like that anymore. You know. But truth, I, I have nothing but good things to say about John Jones. Like I could, yeah, yeah I could tell you. Guys have you guys had a chance to uh, share some rounds in, in Jackson Week while he was there? Yeah, we grappled. We grappled. It's when we sparred, and one of the only times we sparred, like it was when I first got to the gym, and I don't know if I don't think he thought that I was worthy or something, but he didn't really like try at all. But I know, like when we last time that we grappled, he was really trying to like just to prove the difference, how much better he was than me. But yeah, that it didn't really. <laughs> it was a good time. I'll just say that. Yeah, I have one last follow-up question about John Jones. I'm, I'm <laughs> stop bothering me about this. So, so there, it's it's uh it's known that John Jones wants to fight in heavyweight now. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think of this? You think he's going to be successful uh, in the UFC light heavyweight division, or you think it's a bad move for him? Uh, well, we got to see when he's going to fight. You know what I mean? He's been talking about fighting for the last two and a half years. He hasn't fought, so it's kind of like. How, how long do how long do we got everybody's gonna keep having this conversation when he hasn't he hasn't fought like you know like eventually is the, the, that window of opportunity closes so I don't know if he can, if he sure. can fight this year I think he can make I think if he fought someone like Stipe he, he can make that jump successfully but uh, again he's he's John man but at the end he like, you know I'm, I'm about to be the heavyweight that, that people that people need to watch out for <laughs> that's a fact I'm about to, I'm about to run through all these motherfuckers in Bellator. That's a fact. Do we That's have any fact. any predictions when you're gonna get that uh, Bellator heavyweight belt around your waist? Uh, I, shoot, if I get Lynn Vassell around this time next year, let's do it. Yep. Let's go. Yep. I just, just need to keep honing my craft. Keep need to keep need to keep making sacrifices. I I wanna I wanna get. I'm tired of people calling me Derek Lewis 2.0. Like I'm tired of that. I'm tired of that that narrative. So like I, I want to break that narrative, bro. Like I just maybe maybe I need to get myself in better shape or get a nice pack of six a, a nice six pack or something like that. But like yeah, bro, I'm tired of being compared to Derek Lewis. I'm nothing like Derek Lewis, which is crazy because Derek Lewis is actually probably my favorite heavyweight. But <laughs> the fact that people keep calling me oh that's Derek Lewis 2.0 that's kind of annoying at this point. So. Maybe it's a compliment to your uh, knockout power, but uh, aside from that, I think your styles are are different enough to yeah not confuse. Derek Lewis, yeah, <laughs> Derek Lewis, man, he's he's a good yeah he's a good heavyweight man. He has knockout power. He's entertaining. He he loses the big ones. 
I don't want to be a guy who loses the big ones. I want to be a guy who wins the big ones. You know? Can't wait to see that, man. It was a pleasure having you, you on. Is there uh, anything Absolutely. you'd like to share with our audience before we wrap it up? Man, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, yeah, man, just look out. Like I said, like, these guys can't hang with me in Bellator, man. I'm about to run through these guys. Like, Sai Soma was supposed to be the cardio guy, the guy who has a really good cardio, and I really went in there and showed that that did not matter. You know what I mean? Like, I just keep closing these gaps, keep closing these, keep axing off these these uh, these errors that I that I may have, and before I know it, like, I'll be more complete. So, I'm looking forward to kicking ass and taking names. Honestly, Lynn Vassell, Tyrell Fortune, Steve Mowry, anybody in the top ten, like. You know how I'm coming, bro. Yeah, man. I'm you, feeling extremely. I'm feeling really confident in my abilities, and my confidence just keep getting. The more and more I fight, my confidence just keeps going up. So, I'm just looking forward to keep proving it. Sai so Soma was a really good test, but I learned. I know what I need to do differently, and I look forward to having an, a, a better performance next time I step into that cage. You've had a great start off to your career: five and zero, oh, three first round finishes, and the next fight. You said May sixteenth. Is that right? May 6th. May 6th. May 6th in Paris. Uh, we're definitely going to be tuning in. Uh, we're big fans yeah. of yours now. We're definitely going to be along for the ride. So best of luck, man. man. Th thanks, thanks for having me on the show, man. And uh, once again, I'm sorry for being late, bro. That's that's not my MO. I just kind of lost track of time and I was doing other things. So No my worries apologies. at all. We'd love to have oh, you back right. in the future, man. Yes, best sir, man. Have... <laughs> take care, have man. Yep. Yeah, take care, brother.